Hey gardeners, I'm Erin with the Evergreen Thumb and today I thought I would make a video for you on how to take a soil sample. There are a lot of variabilities in the soil sample you take based on what lab you're having doing the test um, and what type of results you are looking for and what area you are wanting to test. So um, check with the lab or the kit that you buy to have your testing done, it will specify how much soil you need and usually give a recommendation of how many different areas need to be sampled. Today, I'm going to be testing in my vegetable garden and we have two sets of raised beds that were installed at two different times. So they actually have soil for two different sources. So I'm actually going to do a test of the first six beds which all have soil from the same time and the same locations. I'm not mixing the two and am able to get a more accurate read for that particular section. Um, if you're doing like an ornamental bed um, you might take your sample from several places just in that bed um, or you know if you just want a broader picture of your whole yard or your whole property you can do it that way too. You can do it um, you know, in several, make take samples of several or, ornamental beds, um, and make, but you what the key is to take multiple samples. They need to be fairly deep with no vegetable, uh, no plant material in them, and your tools need to be clean. All right, so let's go into the garden and we'll take a sample. All right, here we are in our vegetable garden. This is our first raised bed. And um, as you can see, I mean, it's April, so there's not a whole lot in this right now. Um, there's a couple of flowers, uh, violets that overwintered that we like to have attract pollinators and just because they're pretty. So um, the first thing you want to make sure is that your tools are clean. This is my trowel. I um, hosed it off and rinsed it off really good. Make sure there wasn't any dirt stuck to the back of it. You don't want your sample contaminated with soil from wherever you last worked in the garden. And we're going to put our sample into a bucket. This is, and make sure that the bucket is fairly clean. Again, you don't want uh, your sample contaminated by other debris or whatever was last in the bucket. So the easiest thing to do, you just wanna make sure you have no, I'm gonna get all the straw out of the way to make sure we've got a nice clean area to sample from. And then I'm gonna stick my trowel in as far as I can to get up a scoop of soil. And then this actually looks fairly sandy, um, but then I'm gonna put that from in the bucket. And then I'm going to do the same for all the remaining beds. So there's six beds in this section, so I'm gonna do six beds. Um, if you wanted to, like I said, do an ornamental bed, you might take it from three or four places within that bed, depending on how big the bed was. All right, so let's go over to this one. And I just noticed that this is in, in the sample I took here. There's a nice good size rock. We don't need that. Um, you want to make sure that you remove any plant material that uh, comes up in your um, sample. Things like that. Something else to consider when taking a soil sample is that you don't have to use a trowel. Uh, if you use a soil probe, you can get a deeper and cleaner sample. Um, though most people don't have a soil probe uh, in, for their garden, you may be able to rent or borrow one from your local extension office or conservation district, but it is definitely not necessary. A trowel will work just fine. Okay, now I have a scoop of soil from each of my six beds and I put them in the bucket. So I'm gonna mix them up really good so that they're all the samples are mixed together well. And um, let's see, see a couple of things in here that I can pull out. There's some partially decomposed bark and things like that that don't need to be in there. So once I get it all mixed up, get out any clumps, pull out any large rocks, any plant material, anything like that, I am going to take my sample. Now this kit that I bought here, um, this is all the soil that they want is this little, 
um, one little scoop. Um, I have heard of soil testing companies that want as much as two pounds, labs that want two pounds of soil. Um, if that is a mail-in test, that is going to be cost prohibitive to mail. Um, so I would possibly look for a different lab or look for a lab that's more local to you. Um, so for this, all I have to do, this one I add it into this tub of uh, a specialized liquid. Oops, sorry. So most um, testing labs will have a form you can fill out. They'll tell you exactly how much soil they need and how to send it. And then you can pick a certain level of testing depending on the detail, the level of detail you want in the results. If you just want MPK, if you want macro, micronutrients as well as macronutrients, if you want water holding capacity, things like that. Um, the more information you want, of course, the more expensive that the uh, test is going to get. Um, in this case, this kit that I bought, um, this is just a, it just came in a box with a, the scoop and a container to mail it back and it cost me $35 and it'll give me um, NPK and a couple, maybe a couple others. So that one's really basic. Um, most tests I've seen start at about $50 if you want something more than just nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium levels in your soil. Okay, now that our sample is properly packaged and ready to be sent to the lab, we are going to take this soil back and return it to the garden. Now this kit that I have, because it's you're adding the soil to an additive that they use for testing, they want you to mail it back within one day of it being the sample being taken. That way, um, the nutrients aren't breaking down and there aren't, um, you know, external factors that could affect what is in the soil. So keep that in mind. Um, a lot of times, like I said, the testing lab or the form will tell you if there is anything specific like that, a requirement that they have for their testing. Every lab is different and it's just a matter of paying attention and knowing what your lab wants and needs. I hope they found that helpful. Um, check out the, the show notes and I will have some resources to some labs and uh, testing information in Washington. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm sorry the aspect ratio changed in the middle of the video, but um, my Gambrel battery died and uh, I didn't realize it. So. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. Check the um, description below. I'll have some links to other soil sampling resources and a couple of labs in Washington that do uh, testing for home gardens or residential properties. Let me know if you've had your soil testing done and what you were able to learn by it. Um, I think a lot of gardeners forget that soil testing can be a very valuable tool, um, an indicator of the health of your soil.